What's up guys, Natu underscore here, with sort of a different type of video than usual. The beautiful MS Paint art you see here will be used like an extremely low budget Domix exclusive video. Max will join me today to tell the story of one particular winter solstice. For those of you who don't know, winter solstice, celebrated on December 21st, is a pagan tradition that my hippie aunt and uncle throw a party for every year. Some ways they like to celebrate are by getting all of their friends and family together to worship Satan! No, just kidding. Typically, they have a bonfire centered in their backyard, and all of the guests circle around it, sing Dar Williams songs, and throw pieces of flash paper into said fire that represent their inhibitions. <laughs> Fun, right? So, leading up to this, Max and I are getting our nerd on, bouncing around with his little cousin and 10,000 other nine-year-olds on a huge trampoline. Undertale music is playing, we're dancing like the skinny white boys we are, and generally, it's awesome. When the fire ceremony began and the Dar Williams started playing, we caught the eyes of a couple of girls standing near us. Max and I start joking, and we hear them shyly giggling. We took the opportunity to start peacocking, and kept rolling out the most seductive of wordplay. The girls keep giggling, and at this point, Max and I are feeling pretty confident. Fast forward about 15 minutes, and we've eaten dinner, alone, and start heading back to the trampoline because everyone knows that a belly full of sugar and soup can only be helped by bouncing uncontrollably for hours. These two girls seem to have gotten their hands on some warp panels from Team Rocket's lair, and practically materialize on the trampoline. They're surrounded by children, and we casually bounce our way over. After some miscellaneous bouncing, one of the girls, who we'll call Sasha, says that she's bored and wants to play dodgeball. Max and I give each other this look, like, she knows we're not in a gym, right? There'd be no teams, no border between them, and no way to get back in after being hit. Sasha reads our minds and shrugs, convincing all 10,000 nine-year-olds, and us, to get into the dodgeball game. After ten games, Sasha has won about seven. I've won two, and Lucas has won one. None of the 10,000 nine-year-olds have a shot. The three of us, and Sasha's friend, who we'll call Tina, are all ten times their size. Somewhere during this cycle, one of the nine-year-olds calls Sasha the Queen of Dodgeball, saying that we need to team up to take her down. Sasha so eloquently responds to this by saying, Oh, I'm the Queen of Balls, alright. At this point, Lucas's eyebrows and my eyebrows have raised so far up that they are no longer on our faces, and we soon realize that we should shift into maximum overdrive to dethrone this queen. We both start taking more wins, and we're seen as threats to Sasha's winning streak. The game's gotten pretty rough, and when the ball heads to the center, Sasha dives for it, and all 10,000 9-year-olds are magnetically drawn into one big heap around her. More than once, I find myself among the 9-year-olds. However, comma, more often than not, Sasha is not treating me like a 9-year-old. We end up grappling in a way where she's pressed up on me most of the time, and these little sessions had been exceptionally quick, usually lasting at least a full minute. Meanwhile, Tina and myself are slowly getting into it. We aren't straight up wrestling in the middle of a trampoline or anything. But Tina has rubbed up against me a little sometimes, and we are having some pretty flirty conversations over in the corner, while a dog pile formed around us. Max and Tina did sort of get involved in the action once towards the end, though, when they, Sasha, and myself were the only ones left in the game. Sasha has the ball and is deciding which board to take down, with Tina standing beside her. Max and I meet eyes, and the kind of telepathy you have with old friends activates. We're about to storm her. In perfect unison, we yell, Susan das Essen und wir sind die Jäger! and bolt towards them. Max knocks the ball out of Sasha's hand, and the four of us slam into the biggest wrestling pile that that trampoline has ever seen. After all of, uh, that, Lucas and I get a bit tired out and say that we're gonna take a break. Dodgeball has devolved into Duck Duck Goose. Remember, there are 10,000 nine-year-olds here. So we head off to the snack table. Both girls seem disappointed, and decide that they're done. For a few minutes, Lucas and I get to breathe clean air and fanboy about what just happened. Oh my god, I spent more time on the floor of that trampoline than I spent walking this whole time. Lucas, I'm happy for you, and I'll let you finish. But my connection with Tina is one of the strongest of all time. OF ALL TIME! It's pretty important to note that after we left the trampoline, Sasha and Tina invited us to play a game of dodgeball with just the four of us, saying that that way they could get more violent. At that point, the insides of our teenage brains are activating like the start of a THX DVD. After that break, which we kept to about two minutes, we find them in Max's uncle's music studio with a few of his cousin's friends. Eventually, they all start to clear out, and it's just the four of us. The girls bring the conversation back to the dodgeball game, and stupidly, I say, no, the trampoline probably still has all 10,000 nine-year-olds on it. And we all went awkwardly quiet. I was getting very scared. I didn't want to ruin anything. My immediate thought process was, oh, Lucas was talking about school earlier, I'll ask him about that. That'll surely get this conversation back on track. I bring up a big winter break assignment that he had gotten, and try to rebuild the conversation from there. This was not a smart move. Equally stupidly, I respond to this conversation topic, and Max and I are chatting up an exclusive storm about my AP Human Geography class. 
The girls are getting bored, and just as it registers that we should probably get to that four-person dodgeball game, Tina's dad walks in, telling the girls that it was time to go. The girls, who we've killed the spirit of so completely at this point, get up with no second thoughts and give us a disappointed goodbye. Realizing the consequences of our actions, Lucas and I join each other on a journey to self-pity. There was no dodgeball from that point on, and we both shuffled off on the paths to our respective mommies. Now, looking back on it, we knew these girls for less than three hours. For all we knew, they were sociopaths, and their idea of more violent wasn't an intense cuddle session, but shanking and mugging us, leaving us much more messed up than we were in reality. Yeah, maybe it's for the best that they had to leave. We'll see you guys in the next Not Too Underscore animated special. Boom, boom, boom.